Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Remington Rand, makers of the Remington, the world's number one electric shaver, present What's My Line? Now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, pinch hitting to Steve Allen, who is spending Christmas with the boys in California, Mr. Peter Lind Hayes. Thank you, Dorothy. And since this is my first experience on What's My Line, I have been watching the program for the past several weeks, and I've noticed that Dorothy always discovers what somebody's line is by looking at their hands. And so if I may, I'd like to quiz her for a moment and ask her if she knows what I used to do by my hand. <laughs> I can't tell a thing from that. I'm sorry. Well, I used to be a pickpocket. <laughs> I would love to uh, pick the pocket on my left because uh, the pockets belong to a very lovely young lady and the star of uh, The Late Love. Uh, is it Late Love? Late Love is Late right. Love, lovely Arlene Francis. Thank you, Peter. It's nice to have you aboard. And on my left, the columnist of This Week magazine and publisher of Random House Books, A terrible mistake here tonight, Arlene. I asked Santa Claus to send me Mary Healy, and by some error, they sent me her husband, Peter Lynn Hayes. I don't quite understand it. Well, on my left is, oh, my moderator, and oh, my papa, John Charles Daly. I got three, but none as big as you are yet, Bennett. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Uh, once again tonight, as is our custom, we've invited some guests over. The guests are here to do one thing, and that is to tie the panel in knots. With some very interesting occupations, we also feel they carry home some prizes. Now let's get things underway. Here is the first challenger whom, whose line the experts have got to spot. Will you sign in, please, sir? You're doing fine. Ed? Ed uh, Butters. First of all, would you mind telling us where you're from? Coldwater, Michigan. Coldwater, Michigan. Right. Well, this is the kind of uh, time of year when, uh, actually, I imagine if you come from cold water, you'll get a little cold even in New York. Uh, uh, I am, yes. But you have never felt cold till you go over and take a look at that panel, because I think you're going to give them some trouble. Would you go over and meet them? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hello, sir. How do you do? Hello. Hello there. How do you do? I sure would like to look at your hands. It's all right with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Chin. Butters, will you come over here now and sit down next to me, please? And uh, we let the panel have one free guest, simply because they've had a chance to see you, look at your hands, find out where you come from. We always begin free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's a poet. A poet, Mr. Hayes. Well, I, I think he's a talent scout for Strike It Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis. I think he's with the House of David baseball team. Mr. Sir. <laughs> I think he's a demonstrator for Remington Rand electric shaver. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Ed Butters of Coldwater, Michigan. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> the panel's going to have to be. Well, uh, Mr. Butters, I think the rules may be known to you. Every time you get a no answer, I flip one of these cards, and as one of our viewers was nice enough to write to me last week, Ten flips and the panel's a flop. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Butters is self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mr. Butters, I feel that you must work outdoors partly in your job, do you? Yes. Uh, do you um, uh, use your hands in your job? Yes. Uh, would you say that you work uh, in soil at all? In soil, at oil, uh, at oil, uh, uh, in soil. Do so his I, hands touch the soil? Yes, I mean, yes, I know. I that, mean, he but, told us his hands were soiled, and that's Oh, do his, shoes, <laughs> do his shoes touch the soil? Oh. That'll be one down and nine to go. You can't get out of that one, Mr. <laughs> Senator. Mr. Butters, uh, you look like the artistic type to me. Does your work in any way uh, touch on artistic matters? No. 
No. Two down with eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, uh, you work partly out of doors. Do you ever do any of your work indoors? Yes. Is there... Yes. You do work with your hands? Yes. But you work with your mind, too? Yes. Is there any anything? man who is pursuing gainful occupation in which there is a relationship either to a product or to any other entity must use the mind in some degree. You know, we don't want to confuse You'd be surprised, thank, Don. Thank you very kindly. <laughs> uh, well, is there anything creative about your work? Yes. Um. Uh, it's a very interesting question. We have here some rather broad designations. We have to perforce use them. And when Miss Kilgallen uses the word creative, she usually has some reference to artistic endeavor. I think on that <coughs> case, we'll give her no. All right with you? Three down and seven to go, Mr. Hay. Do you by any chance have anything to do with, um, with uh, youth? There is a tenuous, but if Mr. Butters wants to be that generous, you go ahead, Mr. Hay. I'm very grateful, Mr. Butters. Um, you say it's tenuous? Yes. His relationship with youth? It is not direct. It has nothing to do with his job? Well, there is a tenuous relationship between what he does and youth, but then there's a tenuous relationship between what we do and youth. Go on from there. <laughs> do you like children? <laughs> yes. Um, I have several. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you reside as your residence, uh, by any chance, on a farm? Yes. It is. I wish to heaven I would miss one. <laughs> Every time I get a yes, I can't think of anything else. <laughs> You're doing great, Pete. Uh, you reside on a farm. Yes. Uh, do you have anything to do with uh, the stock on the farm? Yes. Good heavens. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, uh, do you raise stock? Do you breed stock? Yes. <laughs> Uh, is it a four-legged animal that you are interested in? Yes. <laughs> uh, golly, I wish I wasn't so successful. I'm getting terribly nervous about this thing. I really am. Uh, has it anything to do with cattle? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Well, out of respect for Steve. Can this animal be as big as a bread box? <laughs> Can this animal be as big as a bread box? Yes. Uh-huh. No. Not as we understand no fur bearing. Sir. Mr. Butter's made up for it. <laughs> what, the, what the animal lacks. <laughs> All right. Mr. Butter's, is this animal or any part thereof that you raise used for food? Yes. Is it a farm animal, a domestic animal? What do you mean? It would, uh, we'd, well, up in cold yes, water, yes, Michigan, Sam, I would say. Around what? Up in Michigan, would there be? Would it be? Well, I mean, we're just trying to be helpful. There, you mean an average farm thing? I'm, Is this I a mean domestic a farm, animal in uh, terms Mr. of? Mr. Butters have part, them on part his of, farm. Part of your question, yes, and part of it, no. Oh, sometimes this Mr. animal... Mr. Butters doesn't need any help from me. Go ahead, <laughs> Bennett. I'm going home. Does, does this animal, Mr. Butters, sometimes roam at large through the Michigan woods? No. <laughs> Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. I'm going to give you one more minute to try to get this. Well, that last answer rather stops me, but I, it's given me a weenie, too. Um, this animal, is it usually when full-grown larger than a pig? Yes. Uh, does it have a sort of a hairy coat? Is that how you would define it? Yes. Uh, is this animal traditionally rather busy at this time of year? Yes. Does it have horns? No. <laughs> <laughs> Seven down and three to go. Wait a minute, I want to be sure. Well, what I call horns, you know. <laughs> Branches. You know what I mean. I'm not a... <laughs> I'm going to flip all the cards. Actually, Mr. Butters makes a legitimate point. Technically, there is a great difference between the horn and the antler, but I'm sure you had you reference know. to antlers. Dorothy oh, Mendenham. No, I think Dorothy had it right, and Dorothy found out what you actually did. We'll flip all the cards anyway. Uh, Dorothy? Dorothy? 
Antlers are shed each year. Horns are alive throughout the animal's well, life. Well, I know. I'm not very good at zoology, but uh, you know I meant <laughs> reindeer. <laughs> well, Mr. Butters does indeed raise reindeer. What a happy occupation and what a happy <laughs> result. You get the full prize and our thanks for being a grand Thank guest. You. Nice to see you, Mr. Butters. All right. Let's see what the panel can do with another challenge. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? Joyce? Joyce Meyer, is that right? <laughs> Miss or Mrs? Mrs. Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Meyer, where are you from? From Comanche, Texas. Comanche, Texas. Well, it's nice to have somebody. Four people over there who probably go to Texas sometime. We haven't let them off this program, but you go over and say hello to them while they're still here, will you? Say hello to you, Miss Meyer. Hi, Miss Meyer. How are you? All right, Mrs. Meyer, will you come over here now and sit down next to me? And I think uh, things will move very rapidly, you'll find, once you do, because now that the panel's met you, we give them one free guess as to what your line may be. The free guesses always begin with Dorothy Kilgallen. Airline hostess. Airline hostess, Mr. Haynes. I... <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis. I think she raises Indian corn. <laughs> Mr. Sir. I think Mrs. Meyer dries off wet bats. No, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have another look at Mrs. Meyer, and at the same time, we'll tell them just what it is that Mrs. Meyer does. But the panel's going to have to work. And panel, remember, we've got a promise to get on uh, the usual third contestant tonight, so let's get right into the swim of this. You know the rules, Mrs. Meyer, and <laughs> flip one of these, ten flips, you've got it. All right, Mrs. Meyer is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with... Peter Lind Hayes. Oh. Well, Mrs. Meyer, uh, do you deal in a product? Yes. Is the product, uh, well, is the product, would the product be used around the house? Yes. Here we go again. <laughs> would the product be used by particularly a housewife? Would it be used in, in any room in the house? Yes. Uh, well, when your product is used uh, correctly, does it entail any physical activity? <laughs> well, would it, uh, for instance, keep a housewife, or would it make her... Does this product come with attachments for getting on around corners and under beds? No attachments for getting around corners and under beds. One down, nine to go, Miss Francis. Is this product, Mrs. Meyer, anything that can be worn? Yes. Yeah. Apparel, then? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Seth. Well, Mrs. Meyer, would this product be ornamental? Yes. If it's worn by a lady, would it show if she appeared with it in this theater, let's say? Yes. Certainly could. Is it, uh, worn, then it's worn on the outside, right? For the best effect. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a, a rather small product, would yes. you say? Uh, is it worn on any of the extremities? By that I mean hands or legs or no. fingers or toes. Three down and seven to go. That's our extreme, Miss Kilgallen. Is this a luxury product rather than a necessity? Yes. Is this something that a gentleman might buy for a lady for Christmas? Yes. It would be a proper gift. Oh, very proper. Yes. Would it make her eyes light up? Yes. Well, if I bought it for her, it'd make her eyes light up. Um, well, is it ever given on sentimental occasions? Yes. Uh, does it have anything to do with love? Yes. Helps it along sometimes. <laughs> Wouldn't it? I think so. Yeah. Th this is solid rather than liquid. Yes. I didn't know but what John's love life might be <laughs> kept up by Martin. Please, <laughs> Mrs. Daly's listening. Um, is this something that would come in a rather small box, smaller than a bread box? Yes. <laughs> uh, would it ever come in a jeweler's box? A jeweler's box? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Four down and six to go. That's, uh, Mr. Hayes, I'm going to give you one more minute, because I don't think you're close with this one. Be worn, uh, uh, would this be worn above the neck? Yes. Let's see there. Now, sit back, John. You'll go right through the it windshield. could be. <laughs> could be. I'm just mm -hmm. stroking it, that's all. Well, <laughs> uh, does it have anything to do with the eyesight? No. That's five down and five to go in 30 seconds, Miss Francis. It could also be worn on the body, I take it, as well as on the head. Yes. And it comes in a fairly large box, this gift. Yes. Uh, it could be large or small. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Now, actually, I'm with a 30 second to I'm going to rig the curtain mistletoe. down. It's still late. I already rang the curtain down, but Bennett, I think, had it. You win the full prize, and Mrs. Meyer packs mistletoe. Oh. Uh, 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 that was a wonderful idea. Thanks for being our guest on What's My Line. It's nice to see you. And now, in just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery. Come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends on the panel are blindfolded because they'd recognize our guest. The blindfolds are all in place, panel. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good. Well, you come in, mystery challenger, and... In the case of our mystery challenger, we dispense with all of the preliminary questioning, get right down to the facts of the case, and we'll ask that Miss. Whistle in the audience. Do you often get whistles? No. <laughs> Miss Dorothy, I must say this. I think that our guest is, has um, exhibited seemly modesty, but I'm quite sure that he gets whistled at a good deal by the young people. Right. Well, thank you, Tom. Um, are you in the entertainment world? Yes? Are you in motion pictures? Yep. Uh, are you what I might describe as a glamour boy? I'll do it for you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that depends, ma'am. <laughs> um, are you appearing in a motion picture that's playing in New York now? Be. You would know, wouldn't you? Nope. Actually, I think might be is the only f street, but I think what our guest is saying is that there are enough pictures extant in which he appears so that one of them might well be on Broadway right now. Right, right well, smart talk. If he's, who, if he's who I was thinking of, he'd know, so uh, I'll uh, relinquish. I guess I gotta know. Peter, you're on. Well, are, are you a, a romantic figure on the screen? I imagine you are. Either that or my wife is in the audience and was whistling. <laughs> I'll answer that one. Yes, I would say that our, our guest is a romantic figure. He's a very accomplished, intelligent person, but there's a romantic aura to most of his roles. His voice sounded like Grandpa Moses. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, sparkle occasionally in Western stories? Try to. Um, how now, brown cow? <laughs> Don't Do call you? the mystery guest a cow. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you usually, well, you usually win the girl. That goes without saying. Nope. <laughs> what? Really? No. I usually die before that. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this, though, Peter. I think he's won the girl enough times to give you a go-ahead on it. Well, uh, um... <laughs> Do, uh, are you originally uh, from the East? Yep. Then have you had legitimate training, too, before you migrated to films? Yep. <laughs> um, you, oh, golly. I, I'm, uh, you can pass, Peter, any time you want to, you know. Well, I, I have an idea, but... Well, uh, go stab at it. Well, uh, are you a sort of a brawny leading man? Are you, I mean, the muscular type on the screen? For instance, if you only, if you played westerns, have you ever played, uh, well, have you ever played a prize fighter on the screen? Yep. Uh, was it a very wonderful picture by Stanley Kramer? Yep. Uh, what is it, Peter? Did you just recently challenge Jack Dempsey to a duel? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's unfair. <laughs> Kirk Douglas? Kirk Douglas. <laughs> Kirk Douglas is always full of surprises, and I want to ask if what I hear is true. You've made a new movie that's about to produce called Act of Love, which I understand right. you did in both the French and the English. Is that right? That's right, yes, I did. Did you do the French voice and everything? When you yes, know? I didn't give it quite the uh, falsetto that I gave it tonight. <laughs> I did it in French and English, yes. Well, that's wonderful. When are we going to see it here? It's be it'll be coming out, I think, at the end of January or sometime in February. Well, we shall uh, find it, I think, uh, an act Who of Who wrote great the dialogue for that picture, Kirk? I just want to get a plug in for a Random House author. Uh, <laughs> Irwin, Irwin Shaw. Shaw. Irwin Shaw. <laughs> well, we and Jeff Cassell wrote the French dialogue. Is he also with your house? No, no. He will be. <laughs> he will be. <laughs> and Kirk Douglas did the dialogue for both of them, and uh, the season's greetings, of course, from all of us, and our thanks for taking time out to come and visit us. Thank you. Glad, Glad to be here. You've been a guest. And would you say hello to the panel, Kirk? A very fine, bold handwriting. Charles Winzelberg. Is that right, sir? <laughs> Where are you from? New York City. You're, you're coming with me. Right over here, please. <clears throat> we are very short of time, Mr. Winzelberg, so we're going to dispense with your chance to meet the panel formally. They've had a chance to look at you. We'll go right to the free guesses, which will begin with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's a watch repair man. A watch repair, Mr. Hayes. I think he makes concave balloons for pot-bellied bubble dancers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Miss Francis. Well, we've had mistletoe and reindeer. I think he must be a department store Santa Claus. Mr. Sir. I think he wrote that old song, Down, Down, Where the Winselberg Flows. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have another look at Mr. Winselberg, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. <laughs> the panel... <clears throat> Out of there. This is Mr. Winselberg. You have less than two minutes to go. Mr. Winselberg is salaried. You understand the rules. We flip the cards. All right. Then it, sir. You start it off. Real fast. Uh, is there a product involved? Yes. Is it a useful product? Yes. Is it a product I might find around my house? Yes. Could it be found in any room in the house? Yes. Uh, would it be possible to do without this product? Yes. In other words, it's not absolutely necessary. No. Well, if, if you use this product, if you had it around, would you be able to do certain things that you couldn't do? Uh, is this product by any chance alive or has it ever been alive? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> uh, is this small enough to keep in a dresser drawer? Yes. Would you ever keep it there? No. Well, he wouldn't, but somebody might, though, I think. Uh, you go yeah. ahead. Is it solid rather than liquid? Yes. Uh, is it uh, something that uh, Bennett might possibly have, if you, from what you know about him? Yeah, he might. Huh? Yeah. He might. Time for about two is, questions. Is this Could by any chance a paper product? A paper product? Yes. That's two down and eight to go. <laughs> and our time is, I'm afraid, up, so we'll flip all the cards by default of time. <laughs> and Mr. Winselberg, it's too bad, because he has a very happy occupation. He sells wedding rings. Oh. oh. You win the full prize, and our thanks for being our guest for much of our life. Nice to see you. Bye-bye. And that uh, panel is congratulations. We got the third one in tonight, if only Just. briefly. <laughs> now, we'll be back in... ...is the wonderful season of the year, which moves all of us, I think, to uh, feel very fond of life and fond of our fellows. And so tonight, I would like to say, until next week, this is John Daly wishing you the season's greetings, Dorothy. Thank you, John. Merry Christmas to you, Peter, and goodbye. Merry Healy, Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> good night, Arlene. Good night, good night, Bennett, and happy holidays. Oh, I wish I had some of that mistletoe. I'm going to do it anyhow. Go ahead. Hey, uh, Merry Christmas, John. <laughs> all the folks behind and in front of this program, from Goodson Todman Productions, who are our patrons, as it were, uh, the best of everything for the season for all of you who are with us every Sunday night. Good night, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. 
week, What's My Line will again be brought to you by Remington Rand. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Gladman production.